This is a wedding banquet in a rural village in a central province of China. A large pot of food was snatched up in less than a minute. In a country where food is plentiful, such a scene would be unimaginable. But China is no longer the same. Food has become very valuable in some poor areas. Look at this. It's a mall in a second-tier city in a southern province where there is a promotion. People are crowding up the escalator, afraid that if they are left behind, they won't be able to get the sale items. Behind these unsightly actions lies the misery and fear of the Chinese people. The real estate crisis overlaid with the repeated lockdowns against COVID-19 outbreaks has slowed down or even halted economic growth in many places. The government is incapable of tackling it and there is no comprehensive unemployment insurance program in China. Without any social security, the majority of Chinese people have to help themselves. Of course, the communist elite, the top wealthy people, have no need to be concerned about this issue as the nation's treasury serves as their pocketbook. Yet for most Chinese, the most important way to self-preservation is to downgrade spending and cut back as much as possible, as they have realized that this is just the beginning. China's economy will continue to decline and it can't be stopped. Even for those in the upper income brackets, their spending patterns are changing. Buyers of China's luxury goods market worth 74 billion US dollars used to buy only new products, not used ones. Not so anymore. Shoppers in a downtown Shanghai store walk past rows of shelves displaying a wide array of handbags, shoes, and accessories, ready to find something that catches their eye. Yet this is no regular store. It is a space dual functioning as a warehouse and shop for secondhand luxury goods marketplace ZZER. A year ago, a shopping trip for this lady would have usually involved standing in queues at the glitzy flagship stores of brands such as Louis Vuitton and Gucci in Shanghai in search of the latest season luxury bag. But these days, the office worker is exploring buying secondhand luxury products given the economic climate. Consumption will be downgraded. As someone who is a corporate slave, my consumption will definitely be downgraded this year. But I still like what I like, and I can't control the desire to buy it. So I think this kind of platform with second-hand goods is particularly good, mainly because there are a lot of goods here. What attracts me is there are plenty of goods here, and there isn't any salesperson following me around. So if I like an item, I will just get it straight away. My desire for material goods is reduced. I mean, if you could wear your pajamas for three months at home during COVID lockdown. So, for example, now I can go out with a 10 yuan or a dollar 40 cents canvas bag. I feel like everything can be simplified. ZZER is banking on sentiments like the lady before for growth. The company, which started as an online platform in 2016, began opening offline stores in Shanghai and Chengdu in 2021, and is now looking for more shop space in Beijing, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. The 33-year-old former venture capitalist is seeing a surge in people looking to sell their Hermes, Birkin bags, or Rolex watches to raise cash, as well as a jump in interest from belt-tightening shoppers. As the economy goes down, the buyers are looking for better and higher cost-effective ways to buy goods. So they will look for goods that are more cost-efficient. Then they will discover that buying resale is a really good way to get into it. 
经济放缓对于我们这个行业来说是确实是有一些好处。The economic slowdown has indeed had some positive effects on our industry. On the one hand, on the consigner side, because the economy has slowed down, they will think, why not sell the luxury goods sitting idle at home? Luxury goods, 拿出来去售卖。He said the number of ZZERs, consigners, or people putting up their goods for sale, has soared 40% so far in 2022 over the same period last year. The platform now has 12 million members and expects to sell 5 million luxury pieces this year. It could have ramifications for the China-focused strategies of the world's big luxury goods makers, who are grappling with softening demand in the key market. In terms of the consumption side, I'm not sure that it has really changed too much in terms of the consumption habits. Like I think it's still niche, it's still growing, it still has room and potential for more.、Um, but you know, overall, the high end market in China is still expected to grow.、Um, whether that's resale or new luxury, I'd just say that maybe the middle class, younger generations, are perhaps not buying new luxury as much、um, in this moment of you know being more measured about their pockets. China's second-hand luxury market is tipped to grow to 30 billion U.S. dollars in 2025, from 8 billion in 2020. Consultancy I Research said last year. New estimates from this year are yet to be released. Besides ZZER, other top platforms are local names such as Feiyu, Panhu, and Plum. Each of them drew tens of millions of dollars in venture capital funds in 2020 and 2021. With an eye to improving authentication practices, widening customer reach, and in some cases, moving from online only to online offline models, though handbags remain the top-selling category on luxury platforms like ZZER, its founder says sales of watches and jewelry are also growing fast. While a nylon Prada Messenger or Fendi bag at bag sells for 30 to 40 percent less on resale platforms than in luxury boutiques. Some products have seen the price gap widen further as more consigners rush to sell goods online. For more common working class people, their spending concept has become more conservative, and they won't be moved by secondhand luxury goods at a reduced price. This is an obvious sign because in China, luxury goods are not only commodities; they are also important tools for social occasions and important instruments for saving face. But in front of the practical reality, these considerations have taken second place. Because the economic situation is not so good after the epidemic, and the uncertainty level of the future has risen, I will prefer consumption that is more practical. So I will save more and spend less on luxury goods. According to Chinese media reports, as early as 2020, when the epidemic began. White-collar workers in affluent cities like Hangzhou were already opting for lunches that cost 10 RMB, or about 150 in U.S. dollars a piece. Previously, their standard was at least twice or three times that price. On the Chinese website Zhihu, a mainland Chinese question and answer website, someone wrote, "Five U.S. dollars and fifty cents for a bowl of noodles that white collars can't afford." As white-collar workers struggle to make ends meet in 2022, their incomes are worse than before. So even dinner is showing the same trend. The topic on Jerhu has also changed to, with only one U.S. dollar and 20 cents on hand, how can white-collar workers make lunch and dinner? A woman in her 20s in Hangzhou has posted more than 100 videos on social media on how to make dinners for one dollar fifty cents in U.S. dollars. Gaining hundreds of thousands of followers, many others are posting videos of Chinese dishes or dinner ideas that cost no more than one dollar fifty cents. At the same time, encouraging themselves to hold on a little longer. A girl surnamed Yang, who claims to have been deep in credit card debt before the epidemic, started a low spending research group on the Douban website with more than one hundred fifty thousand members. Her ways to save money include no more Starbucks coffee, no more French cosmetics, selling clothes at secondhand stores, etc. If you look at China's social media, such as Xiao Hongshu or Bilibili, you will see a plethora of ways to save money. 
A recent article on the internet in China, titled "Young People Born in and After 1995 in First-Tier Cities Are Tightening Their Belts to Get By," describes the lives of those born after 1995. It says that young people born after 1995. Usually grow up with a lot of allowance from their parents, only to find out after they enter the workplace that they have very little money left from their original salary after deducting expenses such as rent, transportation, and meals. The article describes a girl who bought down jackets in reverse in August. In order to save electricity, water, and internet charges, she stayed in the company until 9 p.m. every day. Her cell phone memo contains discount strategies for many supermarkets. She only buys secondhand goods and stays at home during holidays. A young man's company has been losing money for three years in a row, and he hasn't received any salary for six months. He said the epidemic has made him realize the extreme importance of savings. Now he keeps his food cost at one U.S. dollar and fifty cents per meal. Young people's frugality will pose a threat to China's sluggish economy, which grew at a near recession rate of 0.4 percent of GDP in the second quarter. Young people are experiencing a sense of insecurity and uncertainty that they have never experienced before, mainly due to difficulties in finding jobs and downward pressure on the economy. Now, what kind of job is 欢迎大家好，我是海外研究生。Now how difficult is it to find a job? I'm a graduate of an overseas university. I am now in Chengdu. I have been looking for work for three months, but haven't found anything. Ten jobs and ten failures. Nine of these ten jobs are sales positions. The remaining one is actually a sales position, but it doesn't say it out loud in its hiring post. I don't know what to do. There is really no work. I went to apply for a job as a security guard. They said I had too much education that I might leave it after two months of work. I then went to apply for a professional job. I studied electronic computer engineering. I was told I had no work experience and needed at least two or three years of work experience. I am at my wit's end. Where should I go? I contacted the crematorium. The funeral home, but they said they were full. They don't need me. My gosh, it's been really tough to find a job. I am a graduate student from one of the QS World Top 100 Universities. It's been nearly three years since China implemented strict epidemic control measures. As it drags on, all sectors are deteriorating rapidly. In major first-tier cities such as Beijing and Shanghai, it has become impossible to hide the weak economy. 大家好，我现在位置呢，在北京的前门大街啊。Hello everyone, I'm here on Tiananmen Street in Beijing. Another store has closed down. It's a KFC. I never thought that KFC, a world famous company, couldn't survive on Tiananmen Street. This spot was closed down less than a week ago. Last month, there was a Qingfeng Baozi store, a famous Baozi restaurant, closed. Now it's a KFC. Although there is no sign on, we can still see the red color from the old days. The store was quite large. So sad. It isn't easy, ah.、Huh? So sad. It isn't easy. Let me show you the surroundings. There is a total of four stores. Three of them have closed down, leaving only one big tea shop. I don't know if it can hold on. The situation isn't good. It's bad. Look at this tea shop. It's not doing well. It's empty inside. Only the owner himself is here to sip tea. Moving on, this is the east side of the street. You can see it's the same. Two of the three stores in front of us are closed. This is on Beijing's Tiananmen Street, a famous pedestrian street for shopping and sightseeing. It isn't easy to keep the stores open, although they introduced a lot of traditional brand stores. After a period of time, they went down one after another. The new brand stores have come and gone one after another too. This is the century-old famous commercial street, Beijing Tiananmen Street. I don't know when it will be able to restore its previous prosperity. In the coastal manufacturing plants, the feeling is almost disastrous. The bosses are having a hard time, and workers are already worried about survival. In times of economic downturn, people at the bottom of society are feeling even more pressure. Now, so many machines are down. No foreign trade orders. 
You see only a little bit of sample garments. We just took a few pieces of garments to work on. There is not much work, nothing to do. Now we don't feel good. The last foreign trade orders are suspended. Clients said pause and have suspended their orders. Just now, I went to see the factory. It isn't busy. There isn't much to do. It's just the boss and his wife sitting there by themselves. Not even a single worker there. It feels like a bad year. All industries feel like this. My friend said that his factory was going to have a three-month holiday. Alas, I really don't know what to do. I only have very little money to live on. I haven't worked overtime for several nights now. I wasn't needed to work overtime for three nights a week, and I am not needed to work on overtime on Sundays either. Our income is seriously reduced as a result. Let me show you what our plant is like. Once upon a time, our factory was ranked the first or second largest enterprise in the whole town of Chang'an. We worked 365 days a year and couldn't take a day off for the Chinese New Year. What has happened to the glorious times? Our factory hasn't got too many orders. Those international orders are affected by the environment. So compared to previous years, we are a bit slower. See this compression workshop, only one staff operating the machine. This is a compression machine, a row of machines isn't on. Working overtime has become difficult because the company needs to consider the cost. Now I can only make about 430 US dollars a month. It's really difficult. Living expenses are big. The cost of living is so high. Prices are rising. Even rice flour is rising. How can we live, ah? Huh? The life of workers is really tough, ah? Huh? Does the CCP have any better ways to revitalize the economy? Chinese Premier Li Keqiang, who is in charge of the economy, introduced the concept of flexible employment a few years ago. It's actually a disguised term for unemployment. In March 2021, he said that flexible employment in China involved more than 200 million people. Back in May 2020, one of the Premier's proposals was to let people in flexible status work as street vendors. As a result, there was a fever for street vendors in many parts of China. But soon, street stalls were shut down in major cities. At the time, the Beijing Daily quoted that people in charge of the municipal departments stressed that a street full of street vendors in Beijing wouldn't be conducive to building a good image of the capital in the country. In September of this year, it was probably because the economy couldn't hold out anymore that the street vendor economy returned to Shanghai first. On September 22nd this year, the newly amended Regulations on the Management of Urban Environment and Health in Shanghai amended the previous total ban on street vendor operation to stipulate that while no unauthorized occupation of public places for peddling is allowed, certain public areas can be designated for street vendor operation activities. See, nowadays in Shanghai, not only have the Chinese people started street vendor businesses, but foreigners have joined them as well. For various reasons, prices in China are soaring like crazy. What does the Beijing government do to control inflation? It can't raise interest rates because the Communist Party still wants to stimulate the economy by cutting them. In the first eight months of 2022, Chinese households have added 10.8 trillion renminbi in bank savings, up from 6.4 trillion renminbi in the same period last year. Large state-owned banks cut interest rates on personal deposits on September 15th this year in an attempt to discourage savings and boost spending. Globally, China is the only major economy to lower interest rates this year to boost economic growth. What the government can do then is to pass on the increased costs to the people who run small businesses. One way to do this could be to issue astronomical fines to vendors who increase their prices. Attention everyone, attention all businesses, if you dare to raise prices, I will make you lose all your money. Attention all businesses, if you dare to raise prices, I will make you lose all your money. 
those at the lowest levels of society in China have few channels to make their voices heard. As the Communist Party celebrates its achievements over the 73 years of its regime, depressing scenes show that the so-called achievements and joys of the party have nothing to do with them.